Hello there, it is the 25th of December 2020. Merry Christmas. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us here on Pan African Television. This is the Midday News coming to you live from our studios here at Abilinpe, number 48, Swanika Street. We are also streaming live on Facebook and across 32 neighboring countries via satellite. My name is Makiza Mishlin Latifa. Coming up in the news bulletin this afternoon, and MP elect for Tamale Central calls out Ghana police for someone in minority over peaceful walk. Also coming up, I stand by my earlier submissions on Al Haji and Al Haji Inusa Fuseini. And in business, Kane Weavers and Accra complain about low patronage during the festive seasons. These and many more stories are coming up shortly. Please do stay. Now, before we do our Christmas stories, let's do some election-related stories. And Member of Parliament for the Temali Central Constituency, Honorable Ibrahim Murtala Mohammed, has rubbished the decision by the Ghana police to summon some minority members of the 7th Parliament of Ghana for breaching the Public Order Act. According to him, the Public Order Act does not mandate one to seek permission from the Ghana police before embarking on a walk. He made this statement in a conversation with Justice Appear on Hot News here on Pan African Television. Members of Parliament who were exercising their right, you know, in this country and all of that. Afterwards, they've summoned some members of Parliament to appear before court for breaching or violating the Public Order Act. Um, what's your take on that? Well, that, that is mm. utter nonsense. Mm. It's balderdash. I mean, to say the least. Mm. The leadership of the minority in parliament never said they were embarking on a demonstration. Okay. Mm. As a matter of fact, the minority leader and responsible as the caucus is ruled to the electoral commission. They ruled to the electoral commissioner, mm. that absolute ignorant woman who knows nothing, and it is very clear per even her correspondence. She gets her spellings wrong. I mean, and I am embarrassed that I have my former lecturer mm. and the head of the political science department okay. in the person mm. of Dr. Bosman Asari at the commission. Yet even gazetted, they couldn't spell it right. And it is so embarrassing that you have such a character mm. as the EC chair. Why? The minority never said they were embarking on demonstration. Mm. If indeed they wanted to embark on but demonstration. But what did they do? If indeed they wanted to embark mm. on demonstration, they would have indicated that. What, what would you describe what they did? They were walking into a public office to mm. present a petition. Okay. You can decide at Pan Africa TV mm. that all the staff at Pan Africa TV were walking to the EC's office to present a petition. That is not demonstration. Mm. And in any case, who told you and who says that demonstration is an illegality? The bunch of hypocrites we have in this country, mm. particularly the Peace Council and those other councils, they are nothing but a bunch of absolute hypocrites. And I say this for a reason. The impression is created as if demonstration is an illegality. Article 21, clause 1D of the 1992 Constitution mm. clearly states okay. people have the right to demonstrate. In fact, the right to free expression is enshrined in our Constitution. And no court in this country can deny people from exercising that right. And I think that that premise ought to be said. Now, if they were going to present a petition, you had an institution, a body, a part of that institution, in this case, the entire caucus of the minority, 
working from the parliament house mm. to the EC's office, a public office to present a petition. How could that be a demonstration? And what they did was utterly bizarre. Away from that story, the outgoing member of parliament for the Tamale Central constituency, Honorable Inusa Fuseni, has said he stands by his earlier submissions that the National Democratic Congress flag bearer John Dramani Mahama declares himself president and forms a parallel government. As maintained by the legislator, he only shared his opinion on the program and therefore could not fathom why he has been invited by the CID. He, however, added that he will honor the invitation of the Criminal Investigative Department of the Ghana Police Service. He was speaking on Pan-African Television's Good Morning Africa show with Kwame Owusu Danso. Are you you're going to the police station today? Yes, yes. The, the... you want me to continue? I'm going to the police CID today. Mm. Uh, the police CID have invited me to come and assist them in the investigation into what crime i don't know the investigation is in relation to what i said on an allergy and allergy show here that uh, i have advocated and i have said i have said and i've advocated that if the program president is minded to take my advice he declares himself president and forms a parallel government that is what they are investigating so I will make myself available for them to investigate. I'm however disappointed that they have not indicated what exactly they are investigating. Because CID simply means Criminal Investigation Department of the Ghana Police Service. The C is never Comment Investigation Department. They're not supposed to investigate comment. You know, when Taylor, I mean, we are students of law, had pronounced it long ago that you don't have a duty to... to Order an invitation by the police. The police can arrest you, or I mean, whether with warrant or without warrant. A warrant when a crime, I mean, without warrant when a crime is committed in the, in the their presence. presence. Yeah. Uh, with warrant when they, they think that you have committed a crime. But I will, I will, I will want to know exactly what is it that they are investigating. But let me state as a matter of fact, I believed in John Drama and Muhammad. I believe that John Dramani Muhammad was capable of winning the 2020 elections. I actually believe that John Dramani Muhammad won the 2020 elections. I voted for John Dramani Muhammad because I believe that he will win the elections. I campaigned for John Dramani Muhammad because I believe that he will win the elections. Now, I adopted four constituencies. I won three of the constituencies for John Dramani Muhammad. And so, this belief could not have been without premise. It was premised on the fact that John Dramani Muhammad will win the elections. So if I knew John Dramani Muhammad will not win the elections, why would I even vote for him? And that belief is what is informing me that John Dramani Muhammad has I mean, won the elections. Indeed, when I was coming here, I also read a, a piece by by. Uh, Professor H. Pepe, the executive director of CDD. When they didn't tell us, when they conducted the research, and disclosed that they uh, disclosed certain, certain views of Ghanaians, 44% of Ghanaians have said that the outcome of the elections would not reflect what people had voted. Well, meanwhile, the PRO for the Criminal Investigative Department of the Ghana Police Service, DSP, Juliana Obing, has said that the only means to get to the Honorable is through constitutional means, as he failed to honor the invitation yesterday. Sending an invitation to Honorable Alajini Safusaini, the uh, Member of Parliament for Tamale Central to come to the CID headquarters to help with investigations. Now that invitation went through the Speaker of Parliament because he's a certain MP. As I speak to you, the Honorable is still not with us, he has still not come. Now my understanding is that once we close and uh, we still do not see him, would meet as a team and choose yet another option to pursue him. 
So I'm still waiting for him to come. If he doesn't come, I do know that we do have constitutional options where we would choose from and we'll choose one that would suit us. But can you say for a fact that he got the message through Parliament? Yes, I confirm that he, he got the message. He got the message to um, come to the CID headquarters today to help with the investigations. So yes, he has received. The what are some of the options you're likely to embark on? Perhaps if by the close of the day he doesn't show up. Like I said, there are constitutional options where we'll choose from. I am not able to say exactly which one I'm going to choose from. And I don't want to get the right ones that we do have. But I do know that we're going to go through as a team to look at the options and then choose one that's going to be very suitable for, for the CID to, to pursue him. Waiting. If he comes through now, that's fine. But if he doesn't, up until the time we close, the options. But can you run by us some of the options that are likely to be on the table? I know it. Maybe might not speak directly to his issue, but what are some of the constitutional provisions exactly on the table that one is likely to meet? We'll go through the constitutional options and we'll choose one that's suitable. Which is, which could be? We'll go through the options. When we settle on one, I'll let you know. Isn't and that like is the time that we'll be able to tell you the varied options that we have and the reason we have chosen a particular one to go through. Is the CID likely to? Um, Pick him up from like wherever he is. Maybe we've invited him, he hasn't come up, and we try to pick him up here, he doesn't show up. If that's a constitutional option and it suits the CID, the CID will do that. Well, um, we are going into Christmas, holiday is on the way, so is there any likelihood that uh, you could pick him up for any time? I do not remember saying that we are going to pick Honorable Fuseni up. What I remember saying is that if up until close of today, we still do not see him, we're going to meet as a team and look at the constitutional options available to us, and then we'll choose one that's suitable for us. The police works 24-7. We do not know anything like Christmas, and so we mean that during the Christmas festivi uh, festivities we will be working. And so yes, if within the Christmas festivities, the option would be to do that, that's fine. But as we speak, there hasn't been any constitutional option that the CID has chosen from. But we know that we do have options, constitutional uh, options and powers where we are going to um, stand on and then choose what that's going to be suitable for us to work with. Madam, uh, please, uh, how many days is it likely to take for this constitutional option to be taken? I just said that um, we gave on about 10 o'clock to report. It is past two o'clock by my watch, and he's still not here. We close officially at four, but there are times where, because of issues here and there, we, we extend the time, sometimes up until seven, up until eight. Yeah, but officially, we do close at four. Now, the constitutional options would come one after four o'clock officially, the service has closed, and we'll have to meet as a team to decide which option is fine and which option we're going to choose as our next line of action. And now we have many days. I wouldn't be able to tell. I think that I should be able to come back after the meeting to tell you what option the CID has. The honorable member was invited to be here. He hasn't reported yet. So it is equally possible that the CID could go and pick him up. If the CID sees that as a constitutional option, the CID will do that. But for now, the CID is still waiting for Honorable Alaji Mr. Fuseni. Well, so he being a member of parliament, would you go through all the parliamentary, uh, parliamentary procedures before picking him up? We went through the parliamentary procedures, and that's why we extended the invitation to him through the Speaker of Parliament, because he's a certain MP to get him to report to us, to assist with investigations. And so, yes, like I said, there are constitutional options, constitutional powers available to the police, and we go through that to see the next line of action, choose which option is best suitable for the Ghana Police and the CID to use. We went through the parliamentary procedures, and that's why we extended the invitation to him through the Speaker of Parliament, because he's a certain MP, to get him to report to us, to assist with investigations. And so, yes, like I said, there are constitutional options, constitutional powers available to the police, and we go through that to see the next line of action, choose which option is best suitable for the Ghana Police. Now, a civil society group anchoring democracy and advocacy movement, Adams GH, 
among some seven others, have yesterday petitioned United Nations and other international bodies to look into matters relating to the outcome of the December elections to help resolve the difference between the parties. I have been joined in the studio here with David Kumi, who is the Executive Secretary to Care Ghana, one of the CSOs who have petitioned the United Nations. Mr. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, your organization and some other CSOs have raised issues of fraud with the just ended elections. Bring us up to speed on that. Thank you very much. Um, yesterday, um, seven of the CSOs, including Care for Free and Fair Elections Ghana, Care Ghana, petitioned the United Nations, the European Union, the American government, the UK government, the Canadian government, the France government, through their embassies in this country, um, calling on them to intervene with the impasse between the Electoral Commission and then the NDC. Because um, we have realized that as, as uh, members of this country and looking at the things that are happening, it's very important for us to also um, add our voice or maybe also contribute our quota to ensure that peace prevails in the country. You know, our democracy is a fledgling democracy. We've gone for, an, for eight elections and we came out successfully and peacefully. These particular elections is proving um, difficult and it is threatening our democracy. Uh, we believe that um, these bodies and these international communities are, are big brothers who many times when we find ourselves in such difficulties, they come to help and assist to ensure that there is peace. So basically yesterday our press conference was to announce to Ghanaians that we have petitioned these international bodies to call on them to intervene to help us to um, safeguard the peace we have enjoyed for quite some time now and also protect the democracy we have. So basically, that's what we did yesterday. So what are some of the key concerns or issues you raised at your press conference yesterday? Yes, I, what do you have just mentioned? Okay, um, we called on the international bodies to first of all impress upon the Electoral Commission to, as it were, for us, we think that a recollation will help resolve the impasse and the disputes that had occurred in the uh, just-ended elections. So we called on the international body to impress upon the Electoral Commission to do same. Because um, one of the political parties... To recollate parties, the result of both the presidential and the parliamentary elections? Um, the disputes right now and where we are laying our concern is the presidential. With the parliamentary... But there are some issues with some parliamentary you know, results of some constituencies as well. We are very much aware about that. And uh, that is as well the duty of the Electoral Commission. Normally, what we are told is that the elections are won at the polling centers. Exactly. So basically, coalition centers should be pronouncing who becomes um, the MP for that particular constituency. All these coalition centers in the constituencies who have done not what the constitution has said. In fact, coalition must be done in the full glare of the people. People, exactly. people have gathered and they are witnessing the counting and coalition and, and declaration. That must be done. And the places like Sechiri uh, or so, uh, Takwans to M, um, Techiman South, uh, Savlugu, and all the other places who there are challenges with those particular things that were done by the Electoral Commission. I think that it is required of the Electoral Commission to go back there to do the right thing. But the major thing for us, which is bringing the dispute, is the presidential elections, which we think that if we call on these international bodies, they may be able to help to ensure that all these are resolved amicably. So that is one of the things. They, again, we called on the UN because. We realized that after these elections, eight people had lost their lives. lives. And we all, we've all heard this. Elections about, is about counting of heads, not cutting of heads. Okay, exactly. So nobody should, leave, should lose his or her life just because of going to kill to cast a ballot. Okay. We think that the military has not done well in this particular um, 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 situation we find ourselves. Because it's, it is them, it is the military that has caused this particular thing to happen. How, how do you mean? Well, if you see it's the military that have caused this particular issue, how, what exactly are you trying to You see, say? we saw videos circulating, especially when you have to mention uh, Techima South, and then you have to deal with uh, Ablekuma Central. There are videos, there are some of them I can't even show you. In my, I, can't, I couldn't even finish watching them. Very bloody. Very bloody. So you think the security shot. forces did not do enough to protect the lives of the average Ghanaian? They didn't do enough at all. In fact, they let us down. And you see, unfortunately, unfortunately, and very disgracefully, 
um, the Ghana Police Service and the Ghana Army participate in the UN peacekeeping mission. And we believe that these individuals or these members of the security uh, services are, be, uh, are being given some training before you go on a peacekeeping uh, mission. Your mission at the peacekeeping mission is to protect children and women. How do you then come to shoot children, children of 14 year old and 15 year old who are also women, right. girls? This is this is this is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. This is very very unfortunate. And we think that as as citizens we can't sit down to just watch for these things to happen. So we are calling on United United Nations to reprimand these uh, um, um, security uh, um, um, services in this country because and call them to order. You realize that just recently, individuals who are aggrieved by the just ended um, um, elections, one of the avenues that you can use to demonstrate your displeasure is a demonstration. So if people are demonstrating, how then do you go and then hurt people, mean people, and even at the extent of going to want to kill people. Wow. That is a challenge we have. But, but how optimistic are you that your petition will yield any positive results before I let you go? Um, it is better to do something than to do nothing. Okay. We believe that taking this step is, is in the right direction and it will help um, bring the attention of the international bodies to the chaos and the um, 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 confusion that may arise as a result of their quietness because um, people are fuming, people are boiling up. Today, the Ghana police is preventing people from going on their lawful demonstration. Why must that happen? This must not happen. Tajuddin Al Hassan, 39 year old young man from, um, from Techiman, and then uh, Samira Zakaria, 14 year old girl from Sablugu. Today, eight people are dead. Rita or two 50 year old that, that, lady. That's very unfortunate. But what, what are your last words? What are your final words? What do you have to you see, tell us here for um, We are very disappointed in the Electoral Commission because before um, Madam Jean Mensa um, declared the final results, K Ghana came out with a press conference calling on the Electoral Commission to hold on a bit because we have found some discrepancies and some anomalies in the results coming from Ashanti region. And we have what we saw was that, in fact, 236,526 unlawful votes have been added to that of Nana Adodanko Ekufado, His Excellency. And then 69,434 votes have been unlawfully added to that of John Dramani Mahama. And we called the Electoral Commission that this is what we have found. So we are calling your attention, investigate and see, because we believe that in um, the northern region, in the eastern region, in the central region, such things were coming from there. All and right. we chanced right. upon this particular information and we, we brought it out, calling on the attention of the Electoral Commission. Right. As intransigent as the Electoral Commission has been, they, they ignored their call and then they went ahead. So After aside which, the UN, what other um, international bodies have you petitioned? The United Nations and then? The United Nations, the, the European Eastern, Union, the, European um, the American Embassy, the American government through the embassy here. The UK embassy, the UK government through the UK embassy here, the Canadian uh, government, the France uh, France government, All right. um, All right. and then the Australian government. All right. These Thank are the you. bodies we have. Thank you so much for joining us here on Pan African Television. Thank you once again for coming. Now we have been speaking with David Kumi of Care Ghana. Now away from that story, a philanthropist, Neolin Haylett, has paid off the medical bills for a detained patient who could not fit his bills, who could not foot his bills after three major surgeries at the Batok Catholic Hospital in the Volta region. The patient, who is a farmer, also received some cash donations for subsequent medication and food. Agbozo Bessa, a peasant farmer, was rushed to the Bato Catholic Hospital on the 15th of July unconscious with severe stomach complications. The management of the hospital accepted to perform the life-saving surgery on Bessa to spare his life. However, the family could not pay for the major surgeries performed on him to the sum of 7,200 Ghana CDs, leading to his four months detention at the hospital. Mr. Ability Shaibu, a medical records officer, threw more light on the issue. Uh, for some few months ago, the Russian Bessar here for a stomach problem. 
and then you are here for almost five months and you are discharged and uh, find it difficult to pay and then need the financial support. So luckily enough, uh, we are able to, we are doing once how to pay his medical bills and then we get some sponsorship and today they are here to pay for his bills and then have some small interaction with him and see how he's feeling. So thank you. Thank you very much for supporting him or taking him out from this condition. The local representative of Merlin Haylet, Derek Butri, explained why the medical bills for Bessa was paid. But Merlin Haylet has been helping in Ghana for the past 23 years. She's been doing everything from education, from health, taking care of the poor and the needy throughout various parts of the country, providing portable water and all other stuff in the country. So this particular issue of Bessa got to us about a week ago and we learned about the surgery he has undergone and uh, the issue about payment he's been detained and actually packed somewhere in the, ho in the hospital and they seriously need help for him to be able to go back home. So myself and Noah and Nolan, we have to decide how to investigate and be sure on the issue, which I did and we realized that yes, the guy has undergone the surgery and he's in so much pain. Uh, he's not fully recovered, but he's been discharged and must go back home. But he couldn't pay an amount of about close to 8,000 Ghana cities. And then uh, we have to step in immediately and uh, get it sorted. And that is why we came here today. We've paid the major amount. And we're also having some money for him to actually keep himself going. Over 10 patients are detained at the hospital, but six absconded. One of them with severe swollen leg who was detained for over four months is pleading with the general public for assistance to pay off the bills. I want everybody who can help me to go home, help me to my feet and continue my work. I, I would like it to, I, I would like it to help me on that because I'm suffering. I'm too much, I'm suffering. On the local front, government's free water package to Ghanaians as part of its interventions to curb the coronavirus pandemic announced during the president's COVID-19 address to the nation will end this month, December 31st, 2020. The Ghana Company Limited has announced the initiative, which started in April through to June, was later extended, coupled with absorption of electricity bills to a limited percentage for both domestic and industrial users. In a press statement cited by Pan-African News, customers will now be responsible for the payment of water bills next year. It's noted that 31st December 2020 marks the end of the government's directive to the Ghana Water Company Limited to serve Ghanaians with free water as part of measures to curb the rapid spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Customers of Ghana Water Company Limited must please note that from hence, the payment of water bill will be the responsibility of a customer, the Minister of Sanitary and water resources and the management of the Ghana Water Company Limited therefore wished to inform consumers and the general public that the last meter reading for the month of December 2020 officially ends free water delivery, the statement added. Meanwhile, customers who owed the Water Company Limited will be disconnected again until their debts are cleared. Landlords, water vendors can also revert to their old way of doing business with their customers. It would be recalled that President Akufuado, in his fifth address to the nation, declared that Ghanaians will enjoy free water for three months, April, May and June. This package was later on extended by the Sanitation Minister, Cecilia Dapa. Now let's do some Christmas stories. 2020 has been an eventful year with the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic and post-election controversies. Pan-African television news team was on the streets of Accra to find out the general public's assessment of 2020, their preparation for the Christmas festivities and their expectations for 2021. 
The COVID-19 has slowed business this year. The year hasn't been very fruitful, but so far, as we have life, we hope next year will be a successful year. We will manage. The Christmas season will be manageable. We don't have enough money, but all the same, we will manage. We will manage the little we have to make it enjoyable. In 2021, my prayer is that God gives me life and health. Where there is life, there is hope. Because if you have all the wealth, but you lose your life, you've gained nothing. God will always prevail. The year hasn't been great, but God always knows what he is doing. The pandemic has slowed business for us. We as hairdressers, people are always scared to come to us to fix their hair because of the fear of the pandemic. The Christmas season is here and we'll manage things. Once we have life, it's enough. We'll manage with the little we have to ensure we celebrate the Christmas. We hope God will prevail in 2021. I have hope in him and I know everything will be fruitful. I'm looking up to him. Okay. 2020, it hasn't been, it hasn't been a good year because before the beginning of the year, there was a lot of expectation. So at the, at the end of the day, COVID and election look some way. Uh, all my expectations and thoughts I was looking up to I couldn't meet those expectations in the rest all because of this COVID right? God being so good. So far so good. Stay your son out of here. All is well. Well, it's going to be fine as always. You like to work in the Yeah, it's going to be fine. I'm going to stay on it. You better leave this house right now. Don't say that. I'm to look forward to 2021. It's all the expectations and the plans for this year, which didn't go through. Just tell me that 2021 will be a good year. Now let's do some business stories and some cane basket weavers in Accra are complaining about low sales during the Christmas festivities. Speaking on Pan-African News, some of the weavers disclosed that though last year was tough, they are optimistic that reasonable sales will be made by the end of the season. My colleague Ivy Abna Dede Nakite spoke with some traders and has filed this report. Business usually booms during festive period each year. Now the hampers, majority of which are stocked with food, cost between 100 cities to 300 cities. Last year, according to traders, the cost of the cane baskets was very high and so affected their business, compelling them to package their products in plastic baskets. With few days, to Christmas, um, Pan African News is here at Councilman to speak with some of the basket weaving dealers to know if their prices are still high or low this year. Boss, touch your first say. We didn't need coffee, can come. That coffee, me touch. How long now? Why you Juma way? It's almost twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. A fee business the same. Oh yeah, a couple years pa. The normal price is necessary because last year, not traders, the traders were complaining, say, um, the cane baskets, no prices near very, very high. Until last year, they weren't purchasing the the cane um, baskets. Instead, they were purchasing the plastic ones. They purchased this year, no more prices near high. And I said, it was from. Okay, the, at the current year, I'm at this year, the price near, you know, say, at this time, no cane, but last year, no cane is short. It is in a normal price near the dinner. There were 12 CD, and there were 15 CD, and there were 20 CD. It did this to 25. 
and and uh, last year I say so. Also, as the coronavirus, you know, my dinner we China for the day. We more plastic. Never ever say this time Corona. You know, I'm I stop one. You know, I'm my business. You know, cause you see the home tour. You see, we are many man across. You know, I'm born in Costa Rica. 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 I'm born now, following the issuance of permits to poultry farmers by the Ministry of Agriculture to enable them import maize to feed their beds amidst the shortage in poultry feed in the country, President of the Greater Accra Poultry Farmers Association, Michael Nyako Ampim, said the decision was taken after an intense consultation with poultry farmers in the country. According to him, the permit is just for a short period of time. The minister, uh, in his wisdom, made a call. Uh, with the burden of farmers. Okay. Uh, farmers, we, you know, um, farmers are the uh, end users of the product. Um, and then if you see that the, the uh, maize is running out and prices are, are going up and, and it's going to affect your overall uh, cost of production, you begin to talk. Because if you are buying something at X amount and suddenly it's going, uh, by, going up by 20%, 30%, it certainly is going to affect your bottom line, and you begin to uh, begin to talk. Mm -hmm. So we began talking. We met the minister, and then after the uh, after I think about a week, we met the we met the ministry again, and at that meeting, it was agreed that we, I mean everything was clear that we needed a little more maize in the system. Importation is good. It's good in the sense that um, it comes to help uh, stabilize prices. Mm -hmm. Because um, once uh, demand is outstripping supply, prices will shoot up into the sky. And that will not go well for business. Mm -hmm. So the importation, though limited, it's not, it's not an open-ended importation. It's a limited kind of importation. So that by the time our May stocks begin to, the lean season and then the major season kicks in, mm -hmm. it will be stopped. Okay. So it's just to help, one, have enough supplies in the system, and two, Prices. Mr. Ampim also urged Ghana buffer stock to increase its worth, especially maize and other ingredients used in making poultry feeds in order to avert the recurrence of shortage of poultry feed in the future. He further appealed to consumers to bear with poultry farmers on their prices as the shortage may influence their pricing this festive season, but not a deliberate attempt by the farmers to take advantage of the season. Uh, uh. Right, still in business, some traders at Achimota are complaining about low patronage during this yuletide, while some have attributed the cost to the post-election controversies, others believe that Buyers prefer to buy from the malls and supermarkets than buying on the streets. They were speaking to my colleague, Ruth Okoso. Aside the main markets and supermarkets that we normally go to to purchase us during uh, this Christmas mostly, today we're going to find out from those who actually sell or traders here on our pathways or um, food bridges and all, how is the business going like? How is it like? Are people purchasing or they prefer to go to the main markets and supermarkets to purchase during this festive season? Let's find out. It's business goal. As for today's business day, it's fine and everything is going on well. So you, you saw here uh, on a footbridge, let me say, or um, an overhead here on a, uh, Achimota. Uh, people, are uh, people really purchasing during this festive season? Um, as for this place, people uh, normally come here and uh, the, the, uh, um, people have been passing here through all the day. Even in the morning, 
Yes. Yes. So do they purchase? Do they buy? Yes, they buy. Even the even the, they like it. So during this, as we are entering into uh, Christmas and all, oh, are people buying from you, or do you think they will be fair going to the supermarkets and the big big markets that we know? You see that place? Uh, it is too expensive, and there will be a uh, body cars. So they have to come here and buy from this place. You see, if they go there, the same price. And if they come here to the same price, yes. So um, it, it is also obvious that people also prefer a walking distance. Some prefer they can also walk and then just purchase and rather than boarding cars, especially during this hectic traffic. So let's find out from more people. Oh, we got it there. Christmas shops, main markets na ye nim to say cra near dear Aquadija. Because Christmas every day or say in Kofutwa. Mona ko a cra a cockoto. Ah, ye near your wab on ten o' cra de on top. Obeco a cra quacoto. In tea say ya wa hane de. I am a kuma kusa. There's a tete asa in kui. Now let's take a look at the forex rate as of 25th of December 2020. The interbank city performance against some of the major currencies as follows. The US dollar is buying at 5.729 and selling at 5.735. The pound sterling is buying at 7.768 and selling at 7.778. And the euro is buying at 6.985 and selling at 6.992. And the Naira is also buying at 68.431 and selling at 68.705. And the SAFA is buying at 93.815 and selling at 93.905. That's how we end the business news. International news is up next. Please do stay. stories on December 19 Saturday workers of the Sweden based Hens and Moritz's fashion brand in Luxembourg protested the attack on the collective agreements by the management the protest was organized under the leadership of the independent Luxembourg trade union confederation in the wake of the management's decision to cut off part of the workers year-end bonus the Communist Party of Luxembourg and the Deer Link, the left have expressed solidarity with protesting workers. According to reports, without any prior consultation, the management of H&M took the decision to cut off part of the end of year bonus corresponding to the two months of partial unemployment caused by the COVID-19 lockdown between March and May. In its statement, OGBL has said that H&M's decision not only constitutes a violation of the provisions of the H&M Personnel Collective Agreement, which was negotiated and signed between the OTBL and the management, but it also constitutes an attack against union bargaining rights. On Saturday, while addressing the gathering of around 100 workers at the Grand Rue in Luxembourg, OGBL Secretary David Angel reiterated that the union will not tolerate attacks on hard won social achievement. In the solidarity statement, Communist Party of Luxembourg Chairman Ali Rocket stated that the union campaign before H&M shops is by no means exceptional. Just a few days ago, the employees of 19 H&M branches in Germany protested against the poor working and wage 
conditions and the hyper-flexible working hours, he said. Day Link, the left, has stated that it's unacceptable that this giant of global capitalism gratitude for the effort of staff who have continued to work on the sport in stores this COVID-19 year is manifested in the form of theft or reward and infringement of rights clearly laid down in the collective contract. national partners for people's dispatch let's do some sports while we look forward to 2020 with renewed hopes and aspirations it will unbeknown to the world that a virus was going to plague the globe and ensure that all plans proved fruitless the novel coronavirus took the world by storm affecting every facet of our lives including football thus more in the following report COVID-19 has had significant impact on all facets of our lives and the world of football was not exempted. Major leagues like the English Premiership, Spanish La Liga, Serie A, French Ligue 1 were suspended. The local leagues were not spared either as the world had to conform to the new normal rather than the normal we knew. Self-isolation, social distancing, wearing of nose masks and the use of hand sanitizers became part of our everyday lives. After a lengthy period on the sidelines, football finally returned amidst the devastation of this global pandemic. Players had to do rather strangely what they love in stadiums without the very people for whom they played, the fans. If you've watched a football match lately, you've probably done it in the comfort of your couch as has the rest of the world. The days of thronging stadiums to watch games seemed like many years ago. The oddity in a player jubilating after scoring a goal became clearly evident. This was not normal, but it was the only way to still enjoy what millions of people across the globe love while ensuring the mitigation of the coronavirus pandemic. There was no better way. Aside the excitement it dimmed, the financial impact on the sport cannot be overemphasized. Clubs have had to bear the brunt of the disease by suffering major losses. In the summer transfer window, a lot of teams could not make any marquee signings due to the fact that stadium revenues, shed sales at all, went on a downward spiral. Here in Ghana, the president, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, had to dole out some 900,000 Ghana cities to the 18 Premier League clubs so they could defray some of their debts in the era of COVID-19, which has led to the organization of matches behind closed doors. As much as football fans have been annoyed by the startling repercussions of the dreaded COVID-19 on football, majority are grateful that there's some football acts. 2020, though a tough year for the sport, one can allude to the fact that it has been a learning curve Knowing anything could bring the world to a standstill and the dearest things to us, like football, could be put on hold. Entertainment, where today marks the 43rd anniversary of the demise of world iconic filmmaker, composer, and comic actor Sir Charles Spencer Chaplin, popularly known as Charlie Chaplin. He rose to fame in the era of silence film through his screen persona, The Trump, and considered one of the most important figures in the history of the film industry. Sir Charles Spencer Chaplin, popularly known as Charlie Chaplin, was born on the 16th of April, 1889. The English comic actor, filmmaker and composer rose to fame in the era of silent film. His career spanned more than 75 years from childhood in the Victorian era until a year before his death on 25th December 1977. He died at age 88 and encompassed both adulation and controversy. Chaplin's childhood in London was one of the poverty and hardship as his father was absent and his mother struggled 
financially, he was sent to a workhouse twice before the age of nine. When he was 14, his mother was committed to a mental asylum. Chaplin began performing at an early age, touring music halls and later working as a stage actor and comedian. At 19, he was signed to the prestigious Fred Cano Company, which took him to America. He was scouted for film industry and began appearing in 1914 for Keystone Studios. He still developed the Trump persona and formed a large fan base. Chaplin directed his own films and continued to hone his craft as he moved to Viesane, Mutual and First National Corporations. By 1918, he was one of the best known figures in the world. In 1919, Chaplin co-founded the distribution company United Artists, which gave him complete control over his films. His first feature-length film was The Kid in 1921, followed by A Woman of Paris in 1923, The Gold Rush in 1925, and The Circus in 1928. He initially refused to move to sound films in the 1930s, instead producing City Lights in 1931 and Modern Times in 1936 without dialogue. Charlie Chaplin became increasingly political and his first sound film was The Great Dictator in 1940, which satirized Adolf Hitler. The 1940s were a decade marked with controversy for Chaplin and his popularity declined rapidly. He was accused of communist sympathies, and some members of the press and public found his involvement in a paternity suit and marriages to much younger women scandalous. An FBI investigation was opened, and Chaplin was forced to leave the United States and settle in Switzerland. He abandoned the Trump in his later films, which include Monsieur Verdoux in 1947, Limelight in 1952, and A Countess from Hong Kong in 1967. Chaplin wrote, directed, produced, edited, stirred in, and composed the music for most of his films. He was a perfectionist, and his financial independence enabled him to spend years on the development and production of a picture. His films are characterized by slapstick combined with pathos, typified in the Trump struggles against adversity. Many contain social and political themes, as well as autobiographical elements. He received an honorary Academy Award for the incalculable effect he has had in making motion pictures the art form of the century in 1972 as part of a renewed appreciation for his work. He continues to be held in high regard with his works The Gold Rush, City Lights, Modern Times, The Great Dictator often ranked on the list of the greatest films of all times. Right, that's all time will permit us here on the holiday edition of the Midday News coming to you live from Pan-African TV studios. Here's a recap of the headlines. An MP elects for Tamale Central calls out Ghana police for someone in minority over peaceful walk. And also I stand by my earlier submissions on Al-Haji and Al-Haji, says Inusa Fuseini. And in business, cane weavers in Accra complain about low patronage during the festive season. And I want to say thank you for spending 60 minutes of your Christmas holiday with us here at Pan African TV. From the news team headed by John Yosin Vine and the technical team headed by Adam Lumo, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. My name is Makiza Michelin Latifa. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas holiday.